Good afternoon. Well, we again get to gather around God's Word, and we've been looking at, in the Gospel lessons, now for almost a month, Jesus bringing the Word of God to people so that He would even bring them bread and the feeding of the 5,000. We're getting to the end of that kind of discourse where He really hammers home the point of what the bread of life is all about. So we're going to look at the living bread from heaven as our focus. Our order of service will be service of the Word, which is in Christian worship, but we'll begin with the gathering rite on the Word of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. How I love your law. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers. How sweet are your words to my taste. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Yet so often we have despised God's word and failed to gladly hear and learn it. For this and all our sins... We bow before God and humbly ask His forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment. I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my 
God gave his word so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The scriptures testify about Jesus who lived a perfect life for you, died on the cross for your sins, and rose again to assure you of your salvation. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift of grace that we come into your presence and offer true and faithful service. Grant that our worship on earth may always be pleasing to you, and in the life to come, give us the fulfillment of what you have promised. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The scripture lessons for our meditation this afternoon are recorded first from Proverbs chapter 9. As we look at these words, the writer gives us a picture of wisdom. And wisdom that offers something that lasts forever is not earthly wisdom. Because even now things change in how we view and see what is going on in the world. Yet the wisdom that God gives is firm and rooted. And so God offers that for us to learn more of what he has planned for us by sending his son, and how we live with that message. Listen now to our first lesson from Proverbs chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her maids, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come in here, she says to those who lack judgment. Come, eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way of understanding. This is the word of God. Our psalm is Psalm 1. And if you can find that on the screen or page 64 in the front of the hymnal, we'll join together in unison with the whole psalm.
Our second lesson comes to us from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 5. In this section, the Apostle Paul contrasts what the world sees as wisdom and what the wisdom from God is all about. So that we don't need to seek after things the world says will bring us pleasure or things that make our life better here on this earth. But instead, we focus on those things that God has given to us and they will last. Listen now to our second lesson. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the, with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is God's Word. Please join with me in speaking our verse of the day. Our gospel lesson comes to us from John chapter 6 and will serve as the text for our sermon. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him." Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. We'll continue with our next hymn, which is hymn 185. O Holy Spirit, grant us grace.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, how was your meal at lunch? Did you get a good meal? You remember what it was even? Sometimes we eat so much or eat so many different things, we often forget what we had. Not even lunch, maybe it was breakfast. Did you get that? I suppose since you had breakfast and maybe lunch today, you don't have to eat supper, right? Tomorrow, don't have to eat then either, right? Because you got today's food? Well, we know that's ridiculous. It would be great to have something that we could eat that would make sure that we wouldn't have to eat anymore, and perhaps maybe that would help with a few other things too. But we don't find stuff that doesn't rot, right? Right? Something that just sits around forever, that probably wouldn't be so good, although I'd love to find that magic bowl of mac and cheese that will never go away. Just keep eating it and eating it, or, or maybe chicken nuggets or something like that. Maybe you've got your own idea of what would be the perfect meal that would never, ever wear out. But then I'm guessing you probably might get a little sick of it, right? Not mac and cheese. Don't, don't, no kids riot here. That, that'll always be good. Pizza, that's okay. But there are times where we tend to think that we keep getting something over and over and over and over and over and over again and it gets bad. Or, or it's no, it's, it doesn't last or, or we get sick of it and, and those kind of things that we wish we could just have that would last forever, they never do. That meal so I don't have to keep on eating. Um, kind of like a good old candy bar. I even got one that's packed with protein so it's going to keep me uh, fully going today because I need the energy, right? What happens? Tomorrow I'm going to need the same thing again and maybe I have to ramp it up because it's not enough and I've gotten used to it. Well, if you recall and you think about how the lessons that we've been looking at as Jesus is talking to his disciples and the crowds that were gathered around, they were looking for perhaps a good old candy bar. They wanted something that they could say, hey, I'll I'll eat that and it'll be good. and I'll come back again and eat another one tomorrow and then another one and another one. Maybe they were thinking of mac and cheese, not a candy bar. But they wanted something that would just be able to get them to the next day and they would just be fine so they don't have to go working or looking for food. But what Jesus was trying to teach them, that even though he had the power to create food for thousands upon thousands of people out of just a couple of loaves of bread and a couple small fish that wasn't the point he was trying to make he wasn't trying to make sure that they had enough food in this life so they could get by and make it he wanted them to fully see what he was He was the one that brought them living bread, something that doesn't spoil, something that brings better results. And so Jesus had to remind them that as they focused on this life and all the things that this life has to offer, they're eating the junk food. They're eating the stuff that doesn't last at all. And they first wanted to make an argument with Jesus because they said, well, you know what? Moses gave us some bread. We had manna every day, and boy, it wasn't that great. But how quickly they got uptight that God was giving them the same food over and over again, even though he provided it and they didn't have to work. Jesus said, if you continue to look for that stuff that that just puts something in the belly, you're going to lose out. And so I want you to see what living food is all about. And so let's look at Jesus' lesson about offering living bread. The first verses, verses 51 and 53, are the message or the main point of what Jesus is getting at. And so let's put our attention then on these words. The only life that really counts. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread... He will live forever. This this bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And then just another verse after that, he says, 
I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will have no life in you. Well, Jesus had been escalating this conversation with the people around them because they were trying to figure out how are we going to get what we need for daily life. And then when Jesus said, I'm the one you need to look to, they said, no, no, give us something else. We already know about you. We've seen you before. We, you've been around. You're just this ordinary person. We know your parents. It's no big deal. But Jesus wants them to get right down to the point that when we try to set up all kinds of things in life that make our life nice and comfortable, in fact, those big bowls of mac and cheese or pizza or whatever it might, I'm going to have you guys so hungry for mac and cheese, you're not going to be able to handle it. If those big bowls of food and those things that make our life so much easier, whether it's the, the, the big pension or the big bank account or, or friends that will go through thick and thin with us or family members that, that have our back, Jesus said, those don't last. Those go away. And if you're not focused on what I have to offer you, then, then you can have all the friends in the world. You can have the best bank account that there ever was. You could be richer than the richest person. But it doesn't go anywhere. And so he says, I want you to know who I am. I want you to get from me what is most important. That even what I have come to do is not try to gather in all the things that matter in this life. I'm going to actually give up my life, he says. I'm going to give you my body, and I'm going to give you my blood. Now, where is some points or sometimes that we might look at this and say, boy, this sounds a lot like what Jesus was doing for the Lord's Supper, but he's not using that context at all. He's not talking about us eating and drinking his body and blood in the Lord's Supper because he's talking about how we have to depend on it and it is absolutely essential that we have it or we can't get to heaven. And that's more than just saying, I'm going to go through this action, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that and I'll be okay. Jesus is telling us that the life that really counts is the one that he gives to us. And doesn't that make sense? Don't we understand that? Because even when we try to get the best food that we can, we try to find the best diet, and, and we take that pill that says, boy, you're going to have that awesome body, and then what? You have to take it again? Oh, wait, you have to add some exercise? You have to do it over and over, and you might not see results for a while. And, and by the way, we put up on the screen all the ones that had the very best results, so you might not be like that one either. Jesus says, I just want you to know who I am. I want you to know what it is that I've done. And, and as we try and, and find all those things that make life better, those good times with people, or can't we all just get along? Can't I just go from place to place, get my job, my hours in, and, and get my paycheck, and then I'll be okay? I've been to school. I've, I've heard all that, right? And we start to tell God, this is the circumstances in which we want your food. We want it to be nice and easy. I want to hear it again only when I have the time. Don't, 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 don't tell me to set my time. And then we start talking about how, how God's word is great, but for someone else to to invest all their time in telling somebody. Or, or maybe, maybe it's it's hard to learn and you know I want the simple stuff like the milk that Pastor Vic talked about last week just give me the basics I don't need to learn anymore and so we find that when we try to put what we are standing next to God and Jesus is is looking for the fakes we're looking for the candy bars you know what happens if this is all we eat Remember what Pastor Vic talked about is all we eat is fast food? It doesn't help us at all. We can understand that, but we don't apply that to spiritual truths. And then we find ourselves far short of where God wants us to be. And you start to say, well, well, God, I was following you. I went to the school. I, I, I listened to your word. I, I, I know it better than some. And he says, but why did you fall off the path? 
Why did you start to look at yourself and think about all the things that you can get and tell your kids it's okay to, to pick and choose? Or tell your kids that it's okay if they go to church. It doesn't matter if they're teaching God's Word. Just go to church. And now you wonder where you're at? See, we fall short. But here it is. Here's the answer. The answer is that Jesus gives us what we absolutely positively need, and that's Him. And He didn't just come to this world so that He can enjoy all the smorgasbord of good food that was around or, or get all kinds of crowds. He came so that He could actually give His life to pay for your sin. All those times that we try to say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, but not, yeah, 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 I've been living on a diet of candy bars. Jesus says, here, I've got you what you need. This is the most important thing, and this is the life that really counts, what I do for you. And so now when we look at what Jesus has done, that he gave his life on the cross, his body and blood is to say, that's the most important thing I'll ever have. How does that look to you then? What do you do with the most important things in this life? Kids, maybe? Take care of them, right? Make sure they have what they need. Make sure you, that you go to place to place, that if you, if you want them to get better at something, you tell them to stick it out, and you tell them to put their time in, and, and they'll get there. Do that same thing with Jesus. Look at what he has done that you can't ever earn it. And he's given you the life that really counts. But the lesson goes farther than that. More than just, oh, here's the best meal. Jesus' words continue. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. You want something better than just getting a good meal every day? Center and focus on the bread of life who gives you all that you need because he gave his life on the cross. And now you're having fellowship with God. Now you're hearing what, what the Apostle Paul talked about in the letter to the Ephesians. Don't go for the things that just make yourself nice or, or, or making life like, exciting. Put wisdom into what God says is important. That I teach my kids that it's important that they hear God's word every single day of the week. Because who knows what happens outside these walls here or outside the walls of the school. Is it okay that you gave them a good education or, or that you got them what they needed to, to excel in whatever extracurriculars that there was and then they, they lose salvation? Here's what matters. Fellowship with God. And so I know I'm not telling you to make sure you force things down your kids. I'm telling you to live as examples. Understand what it means to, to listen to God and then show, boy, wasn't it neat what we heard in church? Let's think about ways that we can do that throughout the week. Or look at what Bible class is going to be talking about. Let's set aside the time to talk about those things together. Or I know someone who could really use that message. Let's go visit them. You see, fellowship with God is what is most important. The only life that counts. But Jesus gives us one final illustration of how this all works together. And he says that it's more than just this life. He says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. So there's our example of why we're not looking at the Lord's Supper in this particular case. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died. But he who feeds on this bread will live forever. What a stunning picture. In fact, that picture was so stunning that if uh, you remember the previous hymnal, before it becomes the previous, previous hymnal, we used to say those words, inwardly digest, right? 
that we, in, we read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest God's Word. And to study it and to know it really well and to put it in our hearts, those are certainly good ways to think about it. But I want you to think about, again, those words. I've had this apple sitting up here. And man, oh, it's so good. Listen to this. Mm. Is the sound coming over speakers? You hear me crunching and chewing? Sounds good, right? And a little bit. I, it's really good. You have to take my word for it then. This is an awesome apple. And I've been sitting there, it's been sitting there taunting me all sermon. What does that mean? But when we understand what it is that we have that comes from God, we don't we want to eat it and consume it as much as possible. Is it okay that I just set it over here and just look at it? Boy, I know it was in the in the lectern, so that should have been good enough, right? I know it. It's there. Boy, that apple. Great. No, no, no. It's when I actually get to eat it and chew it. Sorry, I don't have apples. That's <sighs> But that's what we do with God's Word. We take that message that we have and say, I need to have it on a regular basis. It doesn't do me any good just to set it there. And I can come up with any excuse. Well, I'm having a sermon, so I can't really eat an apple. (laughs) I took care of that one, didn't I? I already had lunch. I don't need an apple. No, no, did that one too. Right? All those excuses that when we see that they last forever and God gives us this message, they all go away. Because Jesus is giving us something that lasts for eternity. As we think about this message that Jesus gives to us, and He reminds us that He is offering us living bread, I encourage you to make sure that that is seen in every way that you do go through life, right? Right? You encourage your children. Encourage other people's children. I bet that really helps too, right? Encourage someone you see going to school and talk to them about their class. And, and those confirmands that we had eighth grade year, boy, do we even remember who they were? Maybe we need to encourage them to come back to church. But see that this is vitally important that what we have is living bread. And honestly, it's the only life that really counts, isn't it? It's the only life that offers fellowship with God. And there it is. Jesus gives us his life for our place. And it's the only life that lasts forever. That's the food you need. Amen. Please stand. Now may this peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, your Savior. Amen. Our response to hearing the message from God's word, let us confess our faith. And we'll do so with the words of the Apostles' Creed. In our special petitions for our prayer today, we have only one that's in addition to all the other prayers we've been praying. We'll keep many individuals in our congregation with health concerns in our prayers. Um, Vita Green, who um, had moved away in the uh, past few years, um, we've been still serving in in a long-distance kind of connection. She did pass away, and uh, so her funeral was last week. So we'll give thanks for a life that God has given to her. Let us go to our Lord in prayer. 
Almighty God, you have given us your only Son, that he may be for us both a sacrifice for sin and an example of godly living. Give us grace. Lord God, you have graciously given us the companionship of friends and neighbors by placing us in communities where we may live in harmony and work together for the good of society. Keep us free from selfishness, indifference, and prejudice. Lead us to seek the welfare of others and make us willing to contribute to the improvement of our neighborhoods, towns, and cities so that people of Dear Father, in your tender love, you have given great and precious promises to your children. Preserve us from the doubts that assail us and increase our faith. When life puzzles or disturbs us, teach us to fix our eyes on Jesus and to stand firm in the assurance of his promise to uphold and deliver us. O oh God, you work in us to will and to act according to your good purpose. Strengthen us in soul and body that we may do what is pleasing to you and beneficial to all people. Compel us by the self-sacrificing love of Christ and empower us by the gifts of your Holy Spirit to be witnesses of your gospel in our words and actions. We ask this in the name to serve and to give his life as a ransom for all. Lord of life and death, we thank you for the many years that you've given to Vita Green, that you sustained her and provided what she needed, not only for this life, but for the life to come. We thank you for that opportunity to have her in our midst, and we ask that you would comfort and console her family and friends who mourn her passing. We ask that you would guide us to see each of our days as a gift from you and that we use what you have given in our daily life. Now, Lord, hear us as we bring you our private petitions. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, and ask you to hear us Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you, that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. And now hear us as we pray boldly and confidently as Jesus has taught us. O oh Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. And bestow on us your saving peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
You may be seated for our closing hymn. We'll sing hymn 561, Lord, speak to us that we may speak. Welcome and glad that you're able to join us for worship. I just can't help but eat a little more of this apple. Mm. So good. But better than this is something that lasts for eternity. And that's keeping in mind the words of your Savior and following and listening to that word and setting it is so important because... The oh, good of this apple is it's not going to last very long unless I keep on eating it. And so I encourage you then to find some time for adult Bible class Sundays in the mornings between services. We have Bible class for the adults and Sunday school for the children on Sundays. And so even if you come to Thursday night, you can still stop in. That's 9.15 or so. That's plenty of time to get going in the morning. Um, and you can hear some word of God. We're looking at the minor prophets, but that message is so important that we hear that again and what God is promising and telling us. Um, and then also we have the other additional Bible classes. We have our Sunday night and our Wednesday night. Um, they are a repeat. But they, uh, if you didn't get enough on the first one, come for the second one. Um, we're looking at how God has provided for us. And so we can go out and bring more people here to hear God's word one by one. And not just in church, but to actually have those souls to heaven. Um, and we have opportunities for fellowship. We have opportunities to get together as a congregation and maybe mingle among other services. So now that school has started, we get a little more here for this service. But who are those people that come to the Thursday night services or the Sunday mornings? Um, come and join us with the church picnic. That's August 31st. Um, we also have another way to, um, to keep all these things that, uh, that we're looking at and listening to from God's Word uh, Pastor and I recognize the importance of, of Bible study and keeping that as something intentional. And so we went out and got these books um, that, we, that we bought so that you guys could have this opportunity to reflect. And you can use this as a journal to keep track of your Bible readings or maybe you write down a passage that you want to remember or maybe you look and wonder how God's going to work something out and then you look at a scripture passage and then you write down what you're looking for and then you come back and see how God has been so good. And so this is an opportunity to connect. Maybe you write notes during 
the worship service and you write notes for, for, uh, for the sermon. Even the catechism students have to do that for our seventh grade and eighth grade for doing that. So maybe, maybe as adults we can remember some of the things that God has told us or, or stand out in our minds. And so uh, as you go, if you haven't already gotten one of these, I've given them out in Bible classes and to the church council and the faculty. But if you haven't gotten one, um, be sure to grab one from me on your way out. Um, and that goes for husbands and wives as well. We bought 200, but shoot, if we run out, we'll have to get some more. I think that'll be a good idea. Um, so you can also use that as a way. It's got our church logo on it, so you can also use it as as a way that someone else might be able to use it for Bible study. Maybe you write a few notes in there, and then you give it to them. So uh, think about how you might be able to take this message about this awesome food that we have, and, and that we continue to get it and to share that with others. Uh, that's it for our service. Thank you for coming, and we'll see you again. Of course, blessings.